Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Chats with Kat on the Voice of Adoptees podcast. I am your host, Kat, and I hope you're all having a great week so far. Don't forget to grab your coffee, tea, or a preferred beverage and settle on in. I'm currently live with Stacy, who's a Russian adoptee, and she's the admin for the Russian Adoptees Facebook group. Stacy, welcome, and briefly introduce yourself to those who are listening. Hello, yes, thank you for having me on. My name is Stacy. I'm a Russian adoptee. I was in the orphanage till I was five and was adopted by an American family. Oh, okay. So let's talk about your ado- adoption story. You said you were in the orphanage until you were about five. How much of it do you yeah. remember? I remember bits and pieces of it mm-hmm. from just mostly like playing outside and for whatever reason, I remembered like the entire layout of the orphanage and where I was sleeping and, and this kind of weird de- details like that. But yeah, I was eventually adopted by an American family. They moved uh, around a lot. So I didn't come to America till later. I was uh, first, uh, they were in Holland at the time. And then we moved from Holland to Singapore, Canada, and then eventually like to the U.S. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't really get interested in, I've always been interested in in knowing where my family is, but I didn't Mm -hmm. really get serious until after college. And I, uh, Mm. decide I had moved to New York City to try to start a career there and once I felt I was um, in a a better mindset and a better financial place I decided to make the leap and try to search for it okay so well that's a lot to let's let's unpack all of that for a sec because that's a lot so growing up (laughs) but even the beginning (laughs) back to the beginning because I feel like we're we're stopping at a very good milestone. So if we go back to the beginning of what you were saying, you had moved around a lot. And I guess eventually your, your adoptive family settled on America. What was it like going from country to country after being adopted, right? It's kind of like this sense of displacement or um, mm-hmm. were you aware of of the adoption and, and things like that? Like how present yeah. was it for you? Yes, uh, they were uh, the adoptive. My adoptive family was very open. I mean, you can't really hide. Like I have memories of the adoption, that, so they were very open that you were adopted, and you know, and and very supportive of that. In regards to moving around, I I liked it. I was a big fan of of doing something new. I'm uh, even at uh, now. I'm I'm very very adventurous. So always starting a new chapter somewhere else, I like thrived on that. And so interesting way of wording it. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting way of wording it. Starting a new chapter somewhere else is something that you thrive off of. Uh, But you know, like as an adoptee, that's that's a very interesting perspective to kind of consider because a lot of adoptees talk about like displacement and and the loss that comes along with that whereas we have you who's very excited about kind of almost restarting your life and it's kind of like every place you go there's a chance for you to kind of do that yes it, so. it's a, a for, for me it's also like a uh, a big learning experience too you you're get you get thrown into these environments that are different than mm-hmm. your regular mundane like back to back day by day and and some people, uh, I have an adopted brother, not biological, but we were adopted at the uh, mm-hmm. same time. He did not like it at all. He wasn't a fan. He he wanted to stay in one place. So it, to each to each of their own. So right, right, okay. So you've so now you're in the states and you are with your American family. And now let's continue with uh, your story and. You said you were very interested in finding your family in college. Let's pick up from there. Yeah, um, I'd always had this 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 yearn to uh, f- figure out where I came from, my family, if they're still around. And uh, just uh, you know, my biggest goal was just to kind of kind of tell my adoptive family, uh, my biological family, that I'm that I'm okay and I'm and I'm doing all right. Was really the main mm-hmm. goal at the end of the day. If I if there was more out of it, that would have been great. But I I did put my expectations extremely low because 
mm. I didn't want to like over over hype myself. So after college, mm. I, I started uh, moved to New York and I started my career. And I finally I was like, okay, I'm ready for this. So I a- asked my adoptive family for all my documentation. From there, uh, honestly, thanks to social media and, and the uh, Facebook group and stuff like that, I I originally found the it's that a parent the parent the family uh, the family in Ukraine adoption group. It's mostly parents. Yes. Uh, so I took the leap and asked around and said, "Is there any anyone available to help me out?" Mm-hmm. And uh, Irina actually contacted me. And it's like, hey, you know, I'm I'm willing to help out, and so uh, we jumped into it. I, I gave her all my documents, and she was she was able to uh, quickly find uh, find my family. She proved like through documentations. She, she did like a very like thorough job on that. Yeah. That's super interesting because that's actually how I found my biological family too. But it was through someone mm-hmm. in Russian adoptees where someone reached out. And, and helped ah, me. Um, oh, really? And so it's so interesting. And that organization that you're talking about is actually for adoptive parents. Yes. So I like mm-hmm. a lot of adoptees kind of, there's a uh, divide between adoptive parents and adoptees. I find it very interesting that you, that's where you went for help. I guess maybe at the time it was kind of like, well, where am I supposed to go sort of thing? Yeah. Or, yeah. I, yeah. I didn't even, it was actually the first, it was the, I think it was the, one of the first pages that showed up. That's why I went to it, it had the most ah. like people in it. So I was like, okay. And think later on, I found the Russian because um, it's grown, it's grown. The Russian page has grown a lot in the five, six years it's been around. So oh, um, yeah. mm-hmm. I think uh, by then, it, because this is like six years ago, by the way, just to give a time mm-hmm. for reference, this is six, like, seven years know. ago, maybe. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that, that she ended up being like very helpful and eventually gave me her contact number, uh, all the contact number of my family members. Mm-hmm. And from there, I decided to take the plunge and contact uh, who I had left, which was, I had my sister and my grandmother uh, was essentially what wow. the records came up with. Right. Okay. So that's exciting. I feel like for now, being an admin, because I as as well, <laughs> we see a lot of uh, uh, adoptees commenting and their their thoughts and their feelings that they like to share in in the adoptee group. And many people are very nervous if they get if they meet their their biological family or they don't really know what to expect. Um, so, like, what was that like uh, for you? Where it's kind of like you said, you set the your bar low, but were you nervous? Were you excited? And what was meeting them like? Yeah, it was. It was a. I admit it was a struggle at first. Mm-hmm. I had gotten. I contacted my sister, and she was very defensive and very kind of like, mm-hmm. "Why are you? What? What do you want? Why are you here? Like, what do mm. you like? What do you? You know, it was. It was a very like. Interesting. Uh, a lot of pushback really from her you know kind of like oh you don't know the language so there's like going to be language barriers like what's you know what's you know what kind of what's the point L- later on I found out I have um, I had a brother uh, a half brother in the orphanage and I think there was just very bad tension from there so there is a lot a of a lot of kind of, uh, m- they're very spe- skeptical people. The the Russians, uh, like, I mean, in general, I think a lot of people are, but uh, the Russians and the, they're very reserved and kind of like, okay, what do you what are you here for? So it 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 took a it took a very long time to kind of connect with her. I I asked all the questions. Um, I got to know her a little bit, know a lot about her, and um, it ended up a, a lot of things we we have in common. We're very um, we're we're both very nerdy and gamers, so we we ended up connecting on that level. So we nice. I got very fortunate with that. So we had major things in common. So. 
Yeah, I um, see the Roroni tension in the background, and I'm I'm trying oh not to fan girl because that's that's you the first that. anime I've ever watched. Oh my and that's god! What I love. Oh, mm-hmm. my, that's like uh, do you know that's like original anime style? From uh, yeah, the- I know. I saw that. I was like, oh my god. Okay, sorry. Back to the podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I was, I was just in like Japan, alert. so I was like grabbing everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nerd, nerd alert. I apologize. Yeah. Anyway, no, you're good. So back to it. So. I want to talk a little bit about the pushback uh, because this is something that I didn't necessarily experience when I found my family. However, with talking with other adoptees, really opening my mind and being open to other people's experiences instead of only one type of experience and just sitting with them in their feelings and their experiences. Mm -hmm. A lot of adoptees talk about um, how something similar where there's pushback and they don't necessarily understand why there's pushback. It's kind of like there's this view that the family would be excited and happy to be reunited. Um, mm-hmm. I, I feel like we can t- talk to that quite a bit. Or what? So what was your feeling? What was what? How did you feel when you were met with such pushback from your uh, your biological family? Yeah, it was. It was. A little hurtful at first, but I also mm-hmm. had, I'm very, I, I want to be very understanding of people and their situations and me not knowing. I'm like, okay, what, what happened if maybe something happened for them to nice. be like this way? And I just, I decided to sl- have a slow process of learning about her and the family you know, not, you know, bombarding her with like all these questions, just slowly every couple of days, like, Hey, how are you? You know, you know, I watched this show today. Uh, I played this today, kind of just slowly like getting to know her, uh, her Mm -hmm. to understand that I'm not there for whether financial reasons or uh, uh, any other reasons. I, you know, I don't know. So I just made sure for her to feel comfortable and there wasn't some, uh, like she wasn't expecting me to ask something because once again, a lot of times they believe that people show up out of nowhere and it's like, okay, well, what happens if this is like catfish or scamming? Because it does happen a lot. So, yes. Mm Mm-hmm. So, especially in, um, in, in, especially in modern day with modern, uh, like social media and, and everything like that, or they show up asking for like money or something. So I, I can understand the, the worry and the distrust on the family side as well. And I can also understand like the hurt and the confusion, but I, I commend you for taking a slow process. I, I feel like if I had been met with that sort of pushback, I would have been very hurt. And, um, mm-hmm. I don't know if I could have probably handled it as as well as you have or I'm gathering that you probably have um Mm -hmm. so you were able to talk with them and slowly over time you've gotten to know them and uh and so like where are you with it with your biological family now if it's okay to talk about that yeah I we can can also like continue on like how the like the relationship has grown because I did have like the amazing opportunity about six years ago to go on a on a Russian TV show and meet them. Yes. Oh goodness. And so, yeah, so <clears throat> I had done a FaceTime with uh, my sister and my grandmother. Mm-hmm. We were all like, you know, very happy, crying. Um, kind of got our introduction to each other. All, all this time, I was like, uh, I think uh, I learned about using uh, Yandex, which is their version of Google in Russia. So it's a better translation, a translator, if right. anyone wants to switch to that. But uh, so we'd be typing on the on the uh, tr- on the computer and trying to translate and stuff like that. So it, it ended up just mm-hmm. being kind of real fun. Um, and yeah, I got this. I got this opportunity to meet uh, meet them. Uh, Irina had been contacted by a show and, and they were looking for someone, something new. So mm. they ended up contacting us. 
So it was, uh, yeah, it was very hectic. I had, like told my boss, I'm like, I, I'm going, I think I'm going to Russia. I, I hope this isn't like, I hope this is okay. And right. she's like, all right, get like, go for it. So um, right. I, I ended up, uh, they ended up giving me uh, like a two day visa. Mm -hmm. They said, this is the, the one and only time you can do this. Or other than that, you're going to have to apply for a Russian passport. So I went, I, I, I dragged my husband. He's, he has a Colombian passport. So he, he got in free. So we didn't have to have that drama. And we flew over there and it was just, it was a crazy experience, uh, landing, going across country from Moscow to St. Petersburg. They mm -hmm. were, you know, showing St. Petersburg, the city that I was uh, born and lived in for a while. And and then went on the show and I, I got to meet my grandmother and my sister on, on the on the That's show. Amazing. So it was the heck of a it was crazy. So basically what I'm hearing is you're famous. Um you're now a celebrity. So <laughs> yeah. but let's talk about the show. How did they do it? So obviously like you went over there and then you land and what happens? What does that look like? What happens next? Um, I, it was such a short notice. They land. We, we don't have enough time to take the train. So mm. they put us in, uh, like a car with some guy that's no English. We don't have cell phones right. and we go nine hours to St. Petersburg. And I'm just like, I'm in the back. Um, I, I was all excited. And then now I'm like scared because I'm like, oh my God, we're in the middle of Russia. This guy doesn't know any English. We don't know right. Russian. We don't have internet. And I, it was just that, that part was like, I, I laugh to this day, but um, mm -hmm. we eventually get to St. Petersburg. The, f the film crew is there in the process. Uh, during the night in St. Petersburg, we did, uh, we saw like r little Russian shops, souvenir places. We saw iconic um, St. Petersburg buildings. Um, had went to a place where I ate traditional Russian food. Um, oh, yum. Did bar karaoke somewhere, <laughs> and and then eventually, I think it was like 5 a.m. We uh, there was like I think I did 24 hours of no sleeping. Wow. We jumped on the the. Uh, I don't know if people know Russia does have a bullet train from uh, Moscow and to St. Petersburg back and forth. I think it's only f about four hours on the bullet train. And we, we go back and we go straight to the studio. We get, you know, put on makeup and, and throw us out there. And um, that's when the show begins. Oh, that's, I don't know. That's so cool. So, I mean, it, it must have been like a, a culture shock, really, because it's like one minute you're in one spot and then the next minute you're, well, not minute, but you know what I mean? You're in Russia. Yeah. You're, you're we're, we're back home, essentially. Like, how did it feel for you? Like, how did it feel to be, to have stepped foot over there and, and be over in Russia? Like, you know, maybe sometimes you, there's like a feeling of like, ah, I belong here, like a sense of belonging. Uh -huh. like, did you have something yeah. like that? No, not necessarily for me. I just see it as a like a, a new adventure. Mm -hmm. I I do travel a lot, so I've um I get thrown into places where it's not um, so I don't get uh, because moving around a lot and traveling, I don't get culture shock. Right. It was more I was I was very interested in learning about like the people and stuff like that, because I actually, I, I found the people to be like, they're very interesting and want to try to have a conversation because I know Russians get this kind of idea that, you know, we're kind of right. tough and, and stuff. We're cold. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, they, like I said, they are a little bit at the beginning, but after a while they really open up and they want to communicate and they're very interested. So I ended up being like kind of a cool thing. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, there was no kind of, oh, this is like my home and stuff. It was just like, oh, this is really cool. This is like where I lived and this is where I came from. And here's the history of it. But nothing, no, uh, like sense of like belonging. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's like, like kind of like that. It's okay no, to it not feel like you don't. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, 
I guess it just it kind of goes back to like your your ident like the identity and where mm -hmm. you identify as yeah. right like we're Russian but we're we live in the U.S. so it's kind of like the uh, the identifying factor of the U.S. is my home sort of thing. I guess maybe uh -huh. that could have been like a a thing. Um, yeah. What's one? Um, what, yeah. Huh. I was going to say, um, what's one lesson that you have learned from observing the people over in Russia? Uh, they're, they're, they're very kind and, and warm people. They're very interested in, surprising, they're very interested in you and, like, your story. There are so many times where, I mean, getting a little ahead of myself, but, like, I, you know, I, r I pull out, like, my Russian passport and they're like but you don't speak the Russian or, or like your Russian's like, you know, okay. And so people are like so interested in it and like, well, tell me your story. And, and, and so, um, yeah, a, a, I get a, um, a lot of kind of, uh, curiosity from them and curiosity really of, um, what's, you know, how how everything is outside of, um, because you got to remember most people, people have never left their, um, yeah. their city or in their town so it's just kind of the curiosity of what's ha uh what's life like outside of russia is kind of right right so let's go back to the story let's go back to your adoption story you're you're here you know the show is starting and you officially meet your biological family in person mm -hmm. tell, tell me about it tell me all about it i want to know everything uh yeah, it was such like a, a kind of a, a rush because it, like seeing mm -hmm. I was I was to see, you know, my grandmother in person and my sister in person. And like we were very happy and smiles. And I, I don't think much like awkward moments or anything like that. It just it was just kind of we we're all just hanging out and, and doing the show there. You know, the host was asking his questions and and mm -hmm. um kind of uh, you know a little bit of that so right yeah. so do you have do you have like a just like a random question before we continue do you have like a tape of it somewhere that you can um, like show your I, future children yeah yes I do uh-huh it oh, is awesome. yes yeah, some <laughs> yeah it is it, it is online I actually had I found it the other day oh wow yeah so it's still up after so many years I could send you right. a link or something but Oh, that would be cool. I like. I would be very interested to see because I've I've heard about this show, but I've never actually been able to to watch it um, uh -huh. or to find anything about it. Um, oh, really? So let's go back to the show where the host is asking you different questions and like, what do you remember? What the questions are like? How? Tell me about like the feelings that you were. What was going through your mind as he was asking them or as you were answering them? So it was a lot of it was just kind of like, hey, this is how your their family. It's a, honestly, it was a lot of kind of weird, awkward like uh, comparisons of each, um, mm. like the Russian, like the Russian lifestyle versus um, what the American New York lifestyle, and um, so it was like kind of a little bit about that. There was like s slight. Um, debating regards to like if the orphanage system kind of works to this day um and kind of like um yeah yeah a lot of that so a, a brief history of our our family um but I didn't I don't think my grandmother or sister like said too much or they didn't want to say too much on the show right. um because like who I don't know, it's national TV, like who wants to, you know, right. have all that. Uh, so I think they were very reserved on a lot of things. Um, so mm -hmm. good on them. Keep it private. Right. I, I, I noticed that that is how a lot of uh, Russians are. It's just they're, they're more private, which, again, mm -hmm. comes off as kind of cold. Mm -hmm. um, so was this sort of like a healing process for you? Um you know, girl, we don't, I don't necessarily know how you felt about your adoption and everything like that. But from what I, what we've been speaking about, what I've gathered is like, it It was more of a positive sort of journey. I don't like that word, but uh -huh. it was, yeah. it was just more of an accepted journey. 
it was something yeah. that you had kind of accepted and you were able to go on your journey like in that yeah. way where um, yeah. for many adoptees it's not something that can be necessarily accepted and there's a lot of pain that comes with it yeah no I found it to be very like a new a new start like um kind of like okay this is like hey we've met you know we're we're we seem like we we were good together um like there's no you know extra kind of like you know some people have drama and stuff like that there's no drama i feel like we're comfortable in <laughs> see it as a relationship taking the next step in our relationship and you know going mm-hmm. further into uh planning to come come visit and and meet more of the family so it was more of a uh a new chapter uh to do something new and more so it was more of a um like a a boost of confidence really mm that's an interesting way to look at it. I, I like that. I like how you said that and you, how you explained it. Um, so out of everything, what is the one lesson that that you have learned just throughout going in your entire life about the adoption experience, about um, the TV show? And, and if you could word it into one sentence, what would it be where it's like a lesson? I'd say... I'd say I'd have people, um, I'd say maybe learn yourself and and prepare yourself uh, for anything and everything and, and go, go from there. Um, Mm -hmm. just like take, take the leap, um, and, and, and go for it. I mean, sometimes it it might not be the best results you want, but you, you you learn from that. Every, every experience you have is just a learning experience at the end of the day. Mm, I agree. And I think it's, it's a learning experience, but it's also like a growing experience, right? Mm -hmm. You grow wiser from it. Um, Yes. So many adoptees want to go and meet their families, especially that's what we see in the Russian adoptees group. If you could have some advice for them, what would that advice be? Just based off of your your experience, I always recommend people going to back and either a experience, even if their family like rejects them or uh, the worst case scenario, at least mm-hmm. jump into learning. Uh, you know where you came from. Learn about the culture. I know identity is very big for a lot of people, and. Um, mm-hmm. It, you know, it, it's, you know, when people learn you're from, you know, from Russia, it's very, like, people are very interested in, and I like, uh, I personally like the, the knowledge of understanding where I came from and, and the history and everything behind that. I so, yeah, I, I'd say go for it all the time. I tell people just go for it or at least be prepared to have it, right? The preparations to, to be there and do it. That's true. Um, also, you know, in, in the Facebook gr- uh, group, we talk about the Freedom of Information Act, and that is a way that adoptees can, you know, try to request information and, and things like that. What is the most requested sort of question that we get from adoptees in terms of trying to find uh, information on their own families? Um, where to start is the biggest thing, mm-hmm. the, the, you know. They have this, this, um, you know, this piece of the, this information and uh, all this information, and it's like, okay, where do I even start? I'm on the fence on whether you should look up your own information, especially if you don't know or understand the language, because mm-hmm. I attempted to do that and I was just like way off. Mm. It, it, it it requires a lot of n- knowledge of understanding like Russian names and uh, uh, because you know the middle name and the last name and how how yeah. um, your your name changes one letter by gender and so I, I'm one of those people yeah. I do recommend hiring a professional that knows the language that can contact and have better communication. It's not, you might be lucky and someone might do it for free, but um, I, I, I highly recommend paying someone to do it because I, you, you want it done right and correctly mm-hmm. and you don't want to be sent wrong or misinformation. And then it's like, oh, I, I couldn't imagine people that I'm 
that might have happened too. So my thing, we have sources on the page and we have people that, that do it for very affordable prices. And so I think if you want the best results, uh, jumping and doing that is the best thing you can do. Mm. I think um, that is, again, it's just one of the, the most common questions, if not obviously the most common question. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of discussions that happen in our in the Facebook group for Russian adoptees. What is one of the more memorable discussions that you that you know you've had where you've wanted to kind of get involved or you've you've had a conversation with somebody? Do you have like a memorable interaction with the with other adoptees? I've well I've met a few. So mm -hmm. I, I would consider those pretty I think a couple of years back we had like a little meetup in New York and so there were yes. like a few people there and I've had people uh come come to New York and I've helped them find the embassy and, and pr uh processes like that so honestly if anyone ever comes uh to New York and wants to do that I'm always open um to to mm -hmm. helping in and and taking them around and stuff like that so so a lot of uh a lot of that, I love when people share like kind of like what they're um, like things they've gotten from Russia or like uh, Russian souvenirs they found. I think that's I tend to think that's like really cute or they find a store in their neighborhood that's, you know, a, a Russian or uh, like Eastern European store and people get I, I like seeing that. I like seeing that too because it's it's not common. It was definitely not common where where I grew up in America, um, and obviously, like one of the places where it is there there is um, the, those sorts of stores is New York, right? Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, I feel like we have to kind of go online, um, you know, if we if we want like uh, Russian recipes or or things like that. And it's nice because a mm -hmm. lot of um, adoptees will share that in the Russian adoptee group now. Um, and it's kind of like a, a nice sense of, of community. Um, yes, definitely. What's, yeah, I, I, I actually, I was going to ask, like, do you have a favorite like recipe? Like what is one of your, your favorite things about your heritage, our heritage being a Russian adoptee? Oh, um, hmm. Like in terms of like Russian culture and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I'm trying. I'm trying to think because it, it's like once you think about other cultures, everyone kind of does the exact same thing. They eat, they drink, right. they hang out with friends. Uh, they all have history, um, and so uh, may maybe I like the historical aspect of Russia. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I think I think Russians make the the coolest freaking monuments ever. Like I, I'm like a <laughs> big fan of russian monuments they, they 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 go big and bad it's like oof yeah i don't know if that's like <laughs> answers the question that but that's okay, it totally all right, counts no. all right <laughs> big fan of that it totally totally counts i'm trying to think like if if there's anything uh, like else like what what's another thing that you would like others to know about your experience about your adoption about your adoption journey I always recommend people, even if they don't, if they're not necessarily ready to go to Russia, just mm -hmm. maybe at least look in the process of, um, you know, renewing your passport and, and thinking about it, because maybe you might have the opportunity and might have the, you know, might can jump on it and, and, and visit even, even at the end of the day, if it's not about uh, visiting your, um, your biological family, if you don't have that, just going there and learning and being in that environment is, is just something else. So, and then how has this impacted you and your future? Like the, the way I think about this is, especially your story with this amazing opportunity to have gone to Russia and to have met your family through a TV show. I feel like it will make a very interesting story for your future family. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm kind of like looking at it like that. Like how, how do you feel that you experiencing your journey will, will impact your future family if you choose to have one? Uh huh. I think, uh, I don't really look that much into 
what the future will be like. I just prepare for now. I prepare for doing um, like uh, advent. I'd like to do. I'd like what I personally experience on about seeing the world and adventuring. I would like to push that also, like with my biological family. I would like to mm -hmm. like. I would love to take my sister overseas. I'd love to like. Uh, travel with her uh i'd like her to experience the world like i have so mm -hmm. i a lot um i would i'm preparing for that um that kind of future um where would you go like where's the first place that you think of that you want to take her she when we were on the tv show and we were like leaving for the airport it was this drama we got into a car accident it's not even that big oh. a deal and it's not even the guy was being so dramatic it was like a like a bump right we we're on bump to bumper traffic and the guy was oh, being dramatic and wanted to yeah <laughs> it, it accident mm -hmm. I, i'm putting it in quotes like i'm so yeah. he was being so dramatic so we had to all like do the proper thing and we can't escape <laughs> we're in bumper to bumper traffic and like exchange information but like we were rushing the airport so we had to split up cars and I ended up going with my grandmother and, and the TV crew and, and my my sister made this comment about it was just like, I'll see you in Paris. And it was a reference to the Anastasia movie, a Disney yes. movie. And yeah. so and yeah. and she's always wanted to go to I was like, man, that's the cutest thing ever. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I just I got goosebumps because that was yeah. that was I feel like for maybe not all, all, every uh, Russian adoptee, but for maybe a, a small amount, like the the movie, the movie was Anastasia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a very gorgeous movie. I love that. So yeah, she said she made a comment like that, and, and she said she's always wanted to go to uh, Paris. So I, I would take her to France. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, yeah. I think you'll be able to. You'll you'll definitely be able to do that in the future, and I. I it's going to be a beautiful time and I'm excited yeah. for you. I'm excited for you and for your sister and it'll be a whole new journey for you guys. Yes. Yes. And with yes. that, I would like to thank everyone for joining me on the episode of chats with cats. A special thank you to Stacy, our, our guest. Stay tuned for another episode every other Wednesday on the voice of adoptees podcast. Don't forget to like subscribe, rate and share this episode so that Stacy's voice can be heard. Always remember, someone somewhere is thinking of you. You are not alone.